You know, the Passive House podcast is generally good for all things passive, but this episode with Matt Farrell, it becomes totally confusing. Matt, sorry, buddy, you're not off the hook just yet. Now, you know, a passive house can be as complicated or as simple as someone wants to explain it. And as someone that has been building passive homes for the past 10 years, I think I have a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about. But after listening to this episode, I'm just totally confused. Listen to this. And the one thing he told me was, <laughs> I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this. He said, don't focus on the ACH 50 number. I'm curious what you guys know or think about that. Looking at you know air exchange rate based on your volume, you're definitely gonna get more than exact. Here's the definition. Just stop. Actually, it is a volumetric test. What's even more confusing is apparently the air tightness gets worse as the house progresses. And they did a midpoint test, and that actually did include a studio and office. They hit an ACH 50 of around a one. Then there was the test that happened when the house was, quote, finished, and that one came in at 1.2. So each one got worse, and I had been told all along the way of, it'll get better. Now, if you guess the house should become tighter as things progress, you are correct. You know, we just finished a house and it was 0.64 at mid. And then, yeah, we poked holes and now we've got like six penetrations that are good mechanical systems for makeup air and a, you know, a bathroom that couldn't have the HRV running it too. So it finished at 0.93. Now let's talk about passive house. Now, what's the whole point of building passive? Now, according to Wolfgang Feist, the inventor of the system, it's all about addressing the need for energy efficient buildings, minimizing energy consumption down to a practical and economical minimum. Now, the weird part about this episode is the hosts are agreeing with Matt that his house is getting down past the point of diminishing returns. Matt, you gotta keep in mind, your house is so airtight we're getting down to diminishing returns, which means a total system size of 17.2 kilowatts. Just stop. Now, hang on a second, Passive House Podcast. If you're talking about the standard, but you're not hitting the standard, why not call your podcast the Pretty Good House Podcast? The point is, Passive House is a construction model with limits for heating and cooling usage. Now, if your home has hit the standard, that's when it has actually reached the point of diminishing returns. Anything else just ain't passive. The problem with a pretty good house is the door is open to a wealth of confusion where everyone starts treating their houses like science projects. Listen to this. Other than outside of geeks like us, most people don't want a house that's 0 0.6 air changes. I need another coffee. Actually, anyone who wants to live affordably is gonna be concerned with this because it's actually when the house begins to act like a thermos. If the air tightness, thermal envelope, and thermal bridge protection is removed, then the house no longer operates as a thermos. It then starts to bleed energy at all times, for all time, forever and ever, amen. So all this talk of not hitting the passive requirements because it's not possible, I don't buy it. There's tens of thousands of passive homes built all over the world. So with this approach, folks, get ready. Add another bedroom to your floor plan because it's being recommended eight by eight room plus an additional 10%. Designers and architects out there, start with the eight by eight and never go small on your mechanical room. You will need the space. And if, <laughs> in the end, if you've got extra storage space, you can put your Christmas tree and your Christmas decorations there. Exactly. And we should have just added 10%. 10%. Well, you know, actually utility spaces in a passive home can be as little as 20 to 25 square feet. It's free storage. So it's like if you size it a little too large, it doesn't hurt anything. Actually, it's not free. At an average $300 a square foot to build, an extra 50 square feet is like adding an extra $15,000 to the cost of your home. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't hurt anything? What about your wallet? You know, there's a trend here saying for you to spend excessively on items you don't need. We've heard add a basement, even if you don't need the extra space. We've heard build a huge utility room, even though we know you don't need the extra space. Just stop. I don't know about you, but I can think of a lot of reasons to spend my money on 
rather than put it into a house for extra space that I do not need. Now we're big fans of the Passive House podcast, but there's a few things we had to straighten out. There's a purpose to Passive House, and it's actually simple and easy to attain. Like we said, anything less, it ain't passive. Air tightness at the passive levels is easily achievable. And if the air tightness is getting worse as the house progresses, it's being built wrong. And you do not, I repeat, you do not need to go overkill on utility spaces. Passive homes really don't need that extra space. See you next time.